Welcome back to 1001. We are going to finish up Exodus 5 and move into chapter 6, uh, just the first eight verses of chapter 6. And so let me go ahead and again read a little bit more to you. And so you'll recall that the battle lines were drawn up and that thus says the Lord versus thus says Pharaoh. Uh, Pharaoh's big question, who is the Lord that I should listen to him, that I should obey his voice? and then let my people go. No, Pharaoh says they're my slaves. Uh, let them go that they might worship me. That's their vocation. Pharaoh says, no, they're my slaves and their vocation is to gather straw and to make bricks, uh, that they're basically brick makers for Pharaoh. And so that's where we're at. And Pharaoh has intensified the labor. And now what we're going to find is that the leadership of Israel is going to turn on Moses and Aaron, and then Moses is going to turn back to the Lord and complain to the Lord. So I'll pick it up at verse 19, the foreman of chapter five. The foreman of the people of Israel saw that they were in trouble when they said, you shall by no means reduce your number of bricks, your daily task each day. They met Moses and Aaron who were waiting for them as they came out from Pharaoh, and they said to them, the Lord look on you and judge, because you have made us stink in the sight of Pharaoh and his servants, and have put a sword in their hand to kill us. And so all the leadership, all the people, they have turned on Moses and Aaron. So then Moses turned to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, what have you done, or why have you done evil to this people? Why did you ever send me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people, and you have not delivered your people at all. And so the Lord's going to respond, but I just want to highlight that, how the Lord, or how, excuse me, how Moses turns to the Lord and brings this complaint to the Lord. And so we'll go ahead and share, and what we're about to get is the Lord's name sandwich. And the Lord's going to speak to Moses, reveal to Moses what's going on, and so we'll work our way through here. So again, just highlighting, the first confrontation with Pharaoh proved to be absolutely disastrous. Pharaoh increases the workload. They have to gather their own straw for making bricks now. The Israelites turn against Moses, and then Moses complains to the Lord. And why have you done evil to this people? The Lord places the blame right on, or excuse me, Moses places the blame right on the Lord. Why have you done evil to this people? Uh, why did you ever send me? And then he says that since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, Pharaoh has done evil to this people, and you have not delivered your people at all. So that's a pretty big complaint that Moses is lodging against the Lord. He doesn't hold back. And we're going to get the Lord's response to Moses' complaint in verses 1 through 8 of chapter 6. So again, let me go ahead and read those. But the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand he will send them out, and with a strong hand he will drive them out of his land. God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty, but by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land in which they lived as sojourners. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the people of Israel, whom the Egyptians hold as slaves, and I have remembered my covenant. Say, therefore, to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from slavery to them. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. I will take you to be my people, and I will be your God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who has brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you for a possession. I am the Lord. And then Moses delivers the message to the people, but they're so brokenhearted, they don't buy into it. But nonetheless, this is the Lord's response to Moses' complaint. Now, there's a few things I want you to see. Uh, first of all, the Lord emphasizes or re-emphasizes, now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. So the Lord does not try to shut Moses down. The Lord does not turn on Moses because Moses brings his complaint to the Lord and his complaint is about the Lord. No, the Lord assures Moses that salvation is coming. So now you're going to see 
what I will do to Pharaoh. The Lord's not deterred by this first disaster, and the Lord is not offended by Moses' questioning or complaint. Uh, the Lord gives assurance to Moses. Just as important, if not more so, is that the Lord speaks his name again. The Lord reveals his name again. So you'll notice that the Lord reminds Moses, uh, I am the Lord. And then we have this speech from verses six through eight, in which the Lord repeats his name again. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And we need to remember that a person's character and purpose are in their name. And so in speaking his name, the Lord is revealing what he's up to. The Lord is revealing his purpose. The Lord is revealing his mission. And so especially look at the name sandwich that gets created in verses six through eight. We have an inclusion here. The Lord tells Moses, this is what you're going to say to the Israelites. I am the Lord, da, 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 da. I am the Lord. And so we have the inclusion of the name, I am the Lord. And it's not just the Lord reminding Moses who is speaking or reminding the Israelites who is speaking. Rather, what's going on is that the Lord is asserting that everything in between this sandwich, I am the Lord, da, 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 I am the Lord, that everything in the middle of that is central to who the Lord is and what his purpose is. It's kind of like the Lord is wrapping his name around these statements in between, and the Lord is saying, this is who I am, this is what I'm all about, this is what my purpose is. Okay, well, what is the Lord's purpose? What is he revealing here? First, to deliver and redeem Israel from Egypt, to rescue them, to liberate them. Uh, that was restated a couple of times, and it gets reemphasized here, the very first place. Uh, this is what I'm up to. I'm going to deliver. I'm going to redeem. I'm going to bring them up out of Egypt, rescue them, liberate them from Pharaoh. But that gets further developed. You will be my people, and I will be your God. We need to recognize that what the Lord is saying here is that instead of belonging to Pharaoh, they're going to belong to me, the Lord. And this flies in the face of our Western notion of liberation. We think about liberation more in terms of independence or like the 4th of July, uh, liberated to be a self-sovereign people. We think about this corporately. We think about this individualistically, that the whole purpose of freedom is so that I can be me. Or if it's my group, the whole purpose of freedom is so that we can be we. Okay, and it, it's all about kind of self-sovereignty, autonomy. But the Lord is not rescuing Israel for their autonomy, not rescuing Israel so that they can be a self-sovereign nation. Very important for us to pick up on that, that the purpose of this liberation is not self-sovereignty, but it's to belong to the Lord. So that God will more or less take the place of Pharaoh Instead of the Israelites being under Pharaoh, now the Israelites are under the Lord. A lot of times when we think Exodus and we think liberation, we're thinking this, seeing this through kind of the lens of Western notions of freedom, where it's all about my right to be me, uh, our right to be us, uh, our right to autonomy. Okay? That's not what we have going on here. This is God liberating the Israelites from Egypt to belong to God, that you will be my people and I will be your God. You won't belong to Pharaoh, you'll belong to me. Third point, third purpose, or aspect of that purpose, you shall know that I am the Lord your God. This knowing, we've seen this word before, we've seen it with uh, Adam knew Eve. Uh, we've seen this in terms of Abraham. Now I know that you fear me. It's this experiential, intimate, personal knowing. And so the Israelites are going to know the Lord their God. They'll be in personal relationship. You shall know that I am the Lord your God. You shall know me, experience me, uh, and experience my salvation for you. And then the fourth aspect of this purpose is I will bring you into the promised land, the land that I promised to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, I am going to give you that land. I promised them that I would give it to you, 
and I'm going to fulfill that promise. And then the Lord speaks his name again. I am the Lord. So within this, I am the Lord inclusion or name sandwich, if you will, the Lord reveals his purpose to Moses and to Israel. It's to, re it's to rescue them, deliver them from Egypt so that they would be the Lord's covenant people and that they would know the Lord, experience the Lord's salvation, be in personal relationship with the Lord, and that they would be brought into the promised land. That God is faithful to keeping that promise. That This is what the Lord's purpose is. The Lord is all about this. And so just to try to highlight again, maybe a little bit different way of saying it, the importance of this name sandwich is that it reveals that this project is central to the Lord's identity that this is not a side job. This is not the Lord saying, you know, if I can get around to it, I will. And one day I'll get you set free. Okay, had a little glitch there. We'll see if we can get this moving again. So what we're seeing here in this name sandwich is that this project is central to the Lord's identity. By wrapping his name around this, the Lord is revealing that this project of rescuing Israel, of making them his covenant people, of being known by them so that they experience him in his salvation and keeping that promise, bringing them into the promised land. This is not a side job. This is not God, God saying, okay, if I can get to it, I'll get to it, but the world is big and I got a lot of stuff going on, but don't worry, I got you on my to-do list. No, not at all like that. This is core to who the Lord is. It's right central to the Lord's identity. Might even put it this way, that this is what the Lord lives for. The creation of this covenant people, and remember the promise to Abraham, that through you and through your offspring, I will bless all peoples. And so the Lord lives for this. The creation of this covenant people, through whom the Lord is going to work to bless all people. And so this project is central, it's core to the Lord's identity, uh, not a side job, his purpose. It's what, it's what makes him tick. Okay, might put it this way. Uh, I would never say this about myself. I would never say this. I am Steve. I fish. I bowl. I golf. I am Steve. Okay, I would never say that. Okay, yes, I've gone bowling a time or two, uh, even managed usually to break into triple figures. Okay, but I am not a bowler. That is not something that I live to do. Okay, and, and so I never say, I am Steve, I bowl. I am Steve. I would never say, I am Steve, I fish, I am Steve. Okay, I've gone fishing. Uh, some of the times I've enjoyed it, but I don't do it often, don't do it regularly. It's not what makes me tick. And so even though I've done it now and then, I'm not a fisherman. Okay, same thing with golfing. Uh, every time I've golfed, I've enjoyed it. I'm pretty bad at it, but it's not who I am. It's not what I'm about. It's just something, well, yeah, I'll go along, I'll do it. But I never really take the initiative to just go golfing myself. Okay, so that's not who I am. That's not what I'm about. So I would never say, I am Steve, I fish, I bowl, I golf, I am Steve. Okay, I can, those, those are all things that are pretty extraneous to who I am. What I might say is, I am Steve, I am a follower of Jesus, I am married to Vonda, I'm her husband, and I'm the father of Rebecca, Rachel, and John Mark. Uh, and I teach and I pastor, I am Steve. Okay, I'm, I might say something like that because in wrapping my name around those things, it's pretty true that that's who I am, that that's who I belong to, that that's what my life is about, that, that that's what I live for. Okay, and so realize that in this name sandwich, the Lord is spelling out to Moses his purpose, that this is who the Lord is, this is what's core to who the Lord is. This is what the Lord kind of lives to do, if you will, the creation of this covenant people. And so I am the Lord, and I will rescue, liberate, redeem, 
that you will be my people and I will be your God and you will know me, you will know my salvation and I will bless you with the promised land. I am the Lord. So make sure you understand that, make sure you get that, make sure you see how that connects with the promise to Abraham and what God is up to. And in closing, what I would like for you to do as your response to this lecture, uh, you can also include you know, what you learn, but especially in response to this lecture, what is your name sandwich? Uh, you need to include your name sandwich in your response to this assignment in order to get full credit. So what is your name sandwich? And with that, uh, I will let you go and we will we will um, finish up today uh, unit two wow module two we're moving right along and i'll have the quiz together and i'll look forward to seeing you zooming on tuesday so hope you have a great weekend uh, enjoy that learning exam and even more get out to church so that it is a great weekend God bless and Zoom with you from San Diego on Tuesday.